Hi, Wolfpack fans. I'm Jeff Gravely. I'm Tony Haynes. And I'm Matt Chaz now. And, and this, this is Pulse of the Pack. Pack. And my podcast partner this week is Jeff Gravely. Welcome in. It's the middle of December. And for college football teams, you know what that means. People are coming and going. They're coming through the portal. They're coming through the recruiting process. Uh, but coaches tend to move around as well, especially when you're an outstanding coach who has paid his dues over a period of 30 plus years. But you want that one head coaching opportunity to get you started. As, a, as the number one guy of a program. And we, well, uh, we wished uh, defensive coordinator Tony Gibson all the best as he moves on now to his first head coaching opportunity in his home state as he takes over at Marshall. You know, it's, it's not his first opportunity to be a head coach, but this is the first time he was hired to be a head coach. I mean, he was in the running for the Charlotte job a few years ago, might have been in the running for the coastal job that Tim Beck got. But if you were to draw up a tailor-made opportunity for Tony Gibson to go back home, this is exactly it. West Virginia was open at the same time, but I think this is a good fit for Tony to get his feet wet as far as a head coach. I texted him congratulations the, uh, on Sunday, and. The, the only thing he really texted back is says, man, I can't wait to go home. That's what this means to him, the opportunity to go back to West Virginia, the state he's, he grew up in, and he, he and his wife have already built a retirement home there. And so this was gonna be their retirement area. Mm -hmm. Now this is a bridge to retirement, a long bridge to retirement for Tony Gibson, but man, what a job he's done mm -hmm. here at NC State in the six years that he's been here. Yeah, he's loved it here at NC State. He's enjoyed uh, Raleigh. Mm -hmm. He's enjoyed working with this staff. This staff is really close. They've got a lot of chemistry. So it was going to take the perfect job and the perfect geographic location, I think, to pull him away. Because he said he had other opportunities, but his patience paid off because going back to his home state is, is really big for Tony Gibson. And he's going to be welcomed there with open arms. And you know, the other good thing for him, he is moving on to a program that just won. They won a conference championship. Right. They won 10 games. Usually when you're a first year head coach somewhere, it's inevitably a rebuilding job. This is not gonna be a rebuild. He's gonna be able to hit the ground running with a program that's already established itself as a winner. And I think that's kind of unusual. Marshall has always had a good program. Mm -hmm. I mean, I remember uh, when Jim Donnan was the head coach at Marshall, he came here to NC State at Carter-Finley Stadium and nearly upset NC State in football. So if when you talk about Marshall football, it is a traditional uh, football program. Uh, we don't hear a lot about Marshall baseball, Marshall basketball, but we do hear about Marshall football. And you're right, it is a, uh, it is a really good situation for Con Tony Gibson to step into. The fact that they just won the conference championship in the Sun Belt, um, you know, he, he's already made a few offers to some of the NC State players that are in the portal. The portal is so fluid, we're not even going to get into the minutia of who's here, who's there, or whatever. We do know Casey Concepcion is moving on from NC State. Um, but as far as who's gone what. but So Tony Gibson with his um, roots in coaching, with his contacts with high school coaches, and with his ability to connect with players. Players love playing for Tony Gibson, mm -hmm. and I think that's another card that he has in his deck as a head coach. So NC State, as we know, is going to advance now and, uh, to a bowl game. It's the Go, uh, Go Bowling Military Bowl in Annapolis against a, a somewhat of a familiar foe, certainly an in-state foe, that being East Carolina, and that game will be played on December 28th up in beautiful Annapolis. That's a great treat for the players oh. uh, and the coaches. Annapolis, I've been there before. In fact, uh, it was uh, NC State back in, uh, what was it, 2002, I think, uh, played at Navy, and uh, Phillip Rivers had a huge game, and uh, the pack kind of ran up the score. So, But that was a memorable experience, I think, taking that trip to Annapolis. So that's a good bowl game because uh, the players and coaches will be housed in Washington, D.C. So there are going to be a lot of tours available for them uh, the week of the bowl game. And then ECU and NC State hook up, as we said, on December 28th. Tony Gibson will not be here, obviously. He has quickly moved on, <laughs> getting ready to build that pro uh, program at Marshall. So there's no time to spare for him. Right. But a great opportunity for, for Freddie Autry Lindsay, former NC State linebacker. I think he played in that game at Navy in the early 2000s. 
Uh, so he'll be returning to Annapolis, but he's going to be calling the defenses in Tony Gibson's absence. And uh, Freddie is a guy, we, we've known him for years because he was a player and he's coached here at NC State for a number of years. And you know, it, it, this, this unique defense that the pack runs, this 3-3-5 three, three, stack, you need somebody in-house that understands the complexities of this defense and no one better than Freddie Autry and Lindsey. Yeah, and you know, not a lot is going to change. It's, I mean, it, folks think, are they going to get out of the 3-3-5? No, no, no. That, that will stay the same. That's their muscle memory, and it has right. been for all year. Right. And, and for Freddie Autry to get this opportunity to step in that role, uh, to step in front of that defense as the lead guy, is a great opportunity for him. And it could be kind of a, a you know, an on-the-job interview. I mean, he could be a candidate to replace Tony Gibson. Uh, Dave Dorn said he was going to do the absolute best that he can to make sure the players on defense get a defensive coordinator that they like playing for, but also is really good and going to do what's best for the players. So Freddie is well liked and does a great job with the Nichols, but now he's going to expand his view a little bit overseeing the entire defense. Pulse of the Pack is sponsored in part by Coca-Cola. Crisp, refreshing, and irresistibly tasty. Is Coke Zero Sugar the best Coke ever? Try and decide. It's the Get Holiday Ready sales event with the Ford Crew. Maverick, Ranger. Another truckload of trucks? Big event needs big, big selection. selection. Right, like the Ford F-Series. Best-selling trucks for 47 years. Gas, hybrid, electric, and big selection means great, great deals. deals. Exactly, which means it's, it's the, the best, best time, time to, to buy. buy. Well said, Sam. Get 1.9 for 60 plus up to 6,500 total savings on a 2024 Ford F-150 hybrid. Mr. Wolf, you're all set. Complete perimeter protection installed and monitored 24 7. No matter who you root for, we can all identify with the best in smart home security. CPI Security is the official security and smart home company of NC State Athletics. CPI Security, identify yourself. From protecting your teeth and gums, to restoring your smile, to sponsoring your local team, Tar Heel Periodontics is the premier periodontal practice of the Triangle community. Our team of highly skilled doctors provide dental care as individual as you are, working with you to build a personalized treatment plan to create the beautiful, healthy smile of your dreams. With offices conveniently located across the Triangle and Central North Carolina, you're never far from the Tar Heel Periodontics family. Visit our website or call now. This segment of Pulse of the Pack is presented by Coca-Cola. Should it be a happy 75th birthday or happy 75th anniversary to Reynolds Coliseum? I don't know, because you can't really birth a building. <laughs> <laughs> at least I wouldn't want to. Right. But uh, it's at least the 75th anniversary of the first games played at Reynolds Coliseum, because there were two games played on the first night. December 2nd, 1949, NC State takes care of Washington and Lee. Some famous names in that game for NC State that are rich in this history. Two of NC State's great All-Americans, Sammy Ranzino and Dick Dickey, both boys from uh, Indiana who came down to uh, NC State to play for Everett Case in the first glory days of uh, Wolfpack basketball. But NC State did win the game 67 to 47. And the first bucket was by? Vic Bubas. As were the first two rebounds, offensive rebounds after missing baskets by Vic Bubas because he was desperate to score the first basket. So the idea for this facility was basically because of Ag Week rainouts. It was a big week in the state when Ag Week came to Raleigh and was at Riddick Stadium. And one week it rained, Dave Clark, a very famous meddler in all things NC State athletics, uh, said we need an indoor arena. And uh, so he started lobbying and pushing the way he always did. And in 1941 at commencement, uh, a young student named William Friday stood up as the student body president and said, 
we're going to get the funding for the uh, steel infrastructure for our new Coliseum. They immediately came in and put up these seven large steel girders that uh, are still prominent, still famous in NC State uh, basketball games and NC State basketball lore because they are the skeleton of Reynolds Coliseum. After the girders were put up, World War II immediately broke out. So there was a, uh, a total stop on in bringing in any kind of structural steel because that had to be used to the war effort. So from 1942 through 1948, this place set as just a big skeleton on campus. Capacity when it started versus capacity when uh, Everett Case got a hold of the plans and increased it to 12,400. So it was going to be about 8,000, 9,000 um, seats. And he saw this, uh, the structure. He saw what it looked like. You could not expand it outward because those steel girders were limiting in the sides of the building. So you couldn't press it out that way. So he just made it longer and longer. So he added, uh, I think, four more girders, extended it out and got it to 12,400. I don't know if it's a quote from him or someone, but the, the goal seemed to be, we want to have the Madison Square Garden of the South. Every case loved Madison Square Garden. He liked being on a big, um, a big stage. There's no bigger stage than that. And that's what he created here with the Dixie Classic, NCAA tournament, ACC tournament, all those things. Uh, you know, Frank Whedon used to quote it all the time uh, back when NC State men's basketball played here. There were more people who came through the doors to see college basketball uh, at Reynolds Coliseum than any other place in the country. This place was not just limited to basketball. What are some of the, we know there were some presidential speeches here. There were a lot of entertainment concerts here. What are some of the more unusual things that happened here that maybe we don't think of Reynolds Coliseum as hosting? Billy Ray Dunn, I don't know if you know him, he's worked here for 65 years of the 75. He told me that he did this, that there was a traveling exhibition of Flipper the Dolphin and he filled the pool at mid-court of Reynolds Coliseum so Flipper could do the uh, Flipper was at Reynolds Coliseum. That's what Billy Ray told me. I haven't found the uh, I know the there were some circuses and the, the big bay doors had to be swung open to bring the elephants in. Correct. So for 20 years, the Ringland Brothers and Barnum and Bailey Circus came to Reynolds Coliseum. Every case grew up with the circus. He wanted the circus to come here in his building. So when they built Reynolds Coliseum, they put in extra large doors on the uh, west side of the building so the elephants could come in. We mentioned briefly about some of the politicians that have been here, but it's gotta be pretty special that Martin Luther King spoke in this very building. It's a, a dramatic and stark contrast for what Martin Luther King saw that day because he came in and there was a large gathering of the Ku Klux Klan in downtown Raleigh. The newspapers, the TV stations, what there, what there were of them at that time, all focused on that particular event in downtown Raleigh. Martin Luther King drove through that, saw those people, um, and the, the crowd gathered on the squares of Raleigh as he came to Reynolds Coliseum to address 5,000 people here. And to me, the enduring legacy is that we talk about Martin Luther King's appearance here, and we know virtually nothing about the events of well, how we had to get here to, and how he had to get here. You wrote in your story, your lead line was, NC State's William Neal Reynolds Coliseum is the most important venue ever built by the state of North Carolina. Why? It's where the passion for basketball began. Because of Reynolds Coliseum, because of Everett Case, and the success they had during those days, North Carolina wanted a basketball program. Duke wanted a top-notch basketball program. Wake Forest wanted one. The ACC became a huge um, basketball arena. It opened the doors for so many things. It helped with the, during the Civil Rights Movement. This place helped bring people together. Just the bringing of people together helped desegregate the city of Raleigh. Students at NC State went out to Hillsborough Street to make sure those uh, very segregated restaurants on Hillsborough Street um, opened their doors to everybody. It's because they were used to coming to places like Reynolds Coliseum where they saw the Globetrotters, where they saw um, Louis Armstrong, where they saw the Temptations, and they saw all kinds of people who came here to be together. The best of the best came here because of what NC State decided to do to have a multifunctional 
arena that could host Ag Day when it needed to, but also host the biggest of all the events. Mr. Wolf, you're all set. Complete perimeter protection installed and monitored 24-7. No matter who you root for, we can all identify with the best in smart home security. CPI Security is the official security and smart home company of NC State Athletics. CPI Security. Identify yourself. Back up. Years from now, what will you remember? <laughs> that. It's a small thing, but you know the small things in life feel the biggest. I'm doing it, Dad! Now that is something to remember. It's the Get Holiday Ready sales event with the Ford Crew. Maverick, Ranger. Another truckload of trucks? Big event needs big, big selection. selection. Right, like the Ford F-Series. Best-selling trucks for 47 years. Gas, hybrid, electric, and big selection means great, great deals. deals. Exactly, which means it's, it's the, the best, best time, time to, to buy. buy. <sighs> well said, Sam. Get 1.9 for 60 plus up to 6,500 total savings on a 2024 Ford F-150 hybrid. From protecting your teeth and gums, to restoring your smile, to sponsoring your local team, Tar Heel Periodontics is the premier periodontal practice of the Triangle community. Our team of highly skilled doctors provide dental care as individual as you are, working with you to build a personalized treatment plan to create the beautiful, healthy smile of your dreams. With offices conveniently located across the Triangle and Central North Carolina, you're never far from the Tar Heel Periodontics family. Visit our website or call now. Well, this is going to be an exciting week for the NC State men's basketball team because the Pack gets a chance to play in two of the most revered venues in college basketball history. As NC State returns to its former home, Reynolds Coliseum, for a 7 o'clock game against Coppin State. I'm Tony Ames with Matt Chaz. Now this is Wolfpack Weekly with Kevin Keats. NC State returns to Reynolds Coliseum, which was the home to Wolfpack men's basketball from 1949 to 1999. Your yes. first year? Well, what was that? Your first year with the pack? 1949? Right? No, no, no. <laughs> no, no, no. I was yeah. about to say, <laughs> well, I, I think it's more 49 than I anything. The 99. Yeah. That's, that's I, right. Isn't that right? I, no, I, I think that is right. Uh, yes, the 49 game. I remember Vic Bubas, like it was yesterday, <laughs> scoring the first stop. basket. It's not what I meant. Vic Bubas did score the <laughs> first is, basket. Is, I, I do know. Is it always a treat for the players to uh, get into that building? And do they have an appreciation for the historical perspective of that? Well, it's a, it's always a treat. Um, you know, as a coaching staff, as someone who's been around uh, for a long time, I have a certainly appreciation for the building and how electric it can be in there. For the new guys, it's tough. They never played in there, so they don't understand. You can tell them about it, and our guys will feel it once they get in there, but they don't know about it. Uh, we walk them through there. Uh, we talk about it during the recruiting process, but until you play in it and you get 5,000 people in there and they're jumping up and down, you don't know anything about it. Yeah. And then on Saturday, the pack will be in Lawrence, Kansas, and will play at Allen Fieldhouse against the Kansas Jayhawks. So Kansas on the road coming up Saturday. That's part of a home and home, correct? Yes. yes. Take us through the process of putting together a, a mini series like that with a, yeah. a program of, of that category. Yeah, we, you know, I, I wanted to. It's it's hard with home and homes, and it's hard to get. You know, here's the tough thing about it is that you know it's hard to start home and homes because everybody wants wants to start the series at home. It was a situation where we knew that we were going to get the SEC. Uh, challenge here. We're going to have an opponent here from the SEC challenge. And so I was in a position where I said, hey, we can afford to start on the road and then have Kansas come back. So now we can flip it and, and we have, you know, a, a really good team come back to Lenovo Center to, um, next year and we'll get Kansas back. We know that uh, Reynolds Coliseum is an old building, but if you are an NC State fan, NC State graduate, Reynolds Coliseum never gets old. No. 
And that was the case on Tuesday night when NC State played the annual Heritage game against Coppin State right here at Reynolds Coliseum. That's where we're recording this podcast this week. And what a, what a special week this is for NC State basketball. It is unique in every way imaginable because not only did you play a game on Tuesday at Reynolds, your next game on Saturday is also at a very historic venue at Kansas. Allen Fieldhouse, yep. I mean, that is just a remarkable place. And to get to play in those two venues in one back week, back. I hope the guys are able to, I'm sure right now they don't understand the historical perspective of it, but later on they might be able to go back and say, you know what, that was a pretty unique experience. Players at NC State, every time they come here and play a game in Reynolds, their reaction after the game is like, man, that was a lot of fun. I had a lot of fun. The, the crowd was right there. It was loud. The noise still bangs off of those steel girders up top. And when you go to Allen Fieldhouse, you're going to feel the same way. Mm -hmm. A few more people will be at that game than the 5,000 here thousand, yeah, at, at, a, at a Reynolds Coliseum. But as far as atmospheres and soaking it up, I hope the players and coaches get to. Uh, because it's a, it's a unique situation for them, the basketball program to be in, to play in those two historic venues in one week. If you were to put together a list of the top five, top ten most tradition-rich historic venues in the history of college basketball, there's no doubt that Reynolds Coliseum and Allen Fieldhouse would be on that list. I would argue it's the short list I mentioned, the top five. Right. You would go with Allen Fieldhouse, probably Cameron Indoor Stadium, Reynolds Coliseum. Uh, per, I'm doing this off the top of my head. Perhaps uh, the Palestra, mm -hmm. maybe. In the, in, Rupp Arena. In Rupp Arena. Uh, don't forget about UCLA. Right, Poly Pavilion. Poly Pavilion because of all the championships that they won when John Wood was there. So if we're, we're doing that short list, I think we just, we, we just put together that short list, but NC State is going to play in two of those buildings the same week. The beautiful thing is, is Reynolds Coliseum is still an active coliseum. Mm -hmm. It is still yes. the home for the NC State women, for the wrestling team, the gymnastics team, the volleyball team, and then one time a year the, the men's basketball team gets to come over here and, and play a basketball game. So I think when the decision was made that something needed to be done to Reynolds, uh, obviously, the move over to the Entertainment and Sports Arena, PNC, RBC, Lenovo, whatever you want to call it, was made. And then in 1999 was the last year the men played here. Um, but from that point, it became a historic landmark. And when they went in and did the redesign and the renovation, they did the perfect job of preserving the history but also updating what needed to be updated. It's a beautiful facility now. You can sit in and just feel the history. In this area that we're in is the Hall of Fame area. There are artifacts all over the place. You feel like you're walking into a museum when you come to Reynolds Coliseum, and you are because it is one of the most historic buildings in the mm. state of North Carolina, not only because of the basketball, but when it was built, the impact it had with Everett Case and the ACC tournament, the Dixie Classic, all of the other things that went on here, uh, circuses. We had drop ad here when we were in school here. You had oh, to stand man. in line that forever. Uh, concerts here, some incredible concerts that were here at, at Reynolds Coliseum. So the fact it is still an active historic building, I think makes it even more unique to come in and experience Reynolds Coliseum because that's what you do. When you come in here to watch a game or you come in here just to walk around, you get to experience the history of Reynolds. Pulse of the Pack is sponsored in part by Carolina Ford Dealers. See your Carolina Ford dealer, proud sponsor of NC State Athletics. It's the Get Holiday Ready sales event with the Ford crew. Maverick, Ranger. Another truckload of trucks. Big event needs big, big selection. selection. Right, like the Ford F-Series. Best selling trucks for 47 years. Gas, hybrid, electric, and big selection means great, great deals. deals. Exactly, which means it's, it's the, the best, best time, time to, to buy. buy. Well said, Sam. Get 1.9 for 60 plus up to 6,500 total savings on a 2024 Ford F-150 hybrid.
right, Mr. Wolf, you're all set. Complete perimeter protection installed and monitored 24-7. No matter who you root for, we can all identify with the best in smart home security. CPI Security is the official security and smart home company of NC State Athletics. CPI Security. Identify yourself. From protecting your teeth and gums, to restoring your smile, to sponsoring your local team, Tar Heel Periodontics is the premier periodontal practice of the Triangle community. Our team of highly skilled doctors provide dental care as individual as you are, working with you to build a personalized treatment plan to create the beautiful, healthy smile of your dreams. With offices conveniently located across the Triangle and Central North Carolina, you're never far from the Tar Heel Periodontics family. Visit our website or call now. Pulse of the Pack is sponsored in part by Coca-Cola. Crisp, refreshing, and irresistibly tasty. Is Coke Zero Sugar the best Coke ever? Try and decide. I'll tell you, college basketball is off to a really a zany start in so many ways. You think about uh, the, uh, the ACC, let's face it, got clobbered in the SEC challenge as the SEC won 14 of the 16 games. I don't think anybody saw that coming, which makes, you know, NC State's loss to Texas that more, much more of a gut punch because that's one of those Kevin Keats said after the game, hey, you know, this one's going to sting for a while, and maybe it did for 24 hours. Yeah, you lose a close game, and you make, what, six of 14 free throws. I mean, that's a killer, and give up 10 offensive rebounds in the second half. And maybe it did sting for a short time, but, boy, it didn't show in that Florida State game. What a, what a great bounce back. And I, I think it was such a character check for NC State, not only coming off the three-game losing streak and that difficult loss to Texas, but now you're playing a Florida State team that is really tough. It's tough to play against those guys because of their style of defense. They're the second tallest team in college basketball. They switch everything. Again, it's, I go back to what we were talking about, the, whether it's the triple option or the 3-5 three, three, stack. Well, Florida State, kind of the same thing with the way they play defense. You, you have to make some adjustments in your offense to get good shots against Florida State. And to think that after all, everything that happened leading into that game, the pack is down by six with a little more than three minutes to play. And for, for that, those guys to pull it together, send the game into overtime, and then end Florida State's all-time record of 14 consecutive <laughs> overtime wins, uh, that says, I think it says a lot about, it, that at the very least, the mental toughness of this NC State team. I think um, as tough as the losses were, the three losses to Purdue, BYU, and Texas, I think will help NC State now mm -hmm. and down the road. So Kansas coming up on Saturday, as we talked about at Allen Fieldhouse, I've never been there, you know, and all the years I've been, I've been broadcasting um, ACC basketball games for 37 years. I've been most places, mm -hmm. including Pauley Pavilion, but never done a game from Allen Fieldhouse. So that's gonna be a treat for me, uh, uh, going this deep into my career, finally having a chance to do a game there. But, you know, Kansas has been ranked number one since the beginning of the season. They go out last week, uh, they lose road games to Creighton and Missouri. They got court stormed at Missouri. Mm -hmm. So um, they're gonna be a little ticked off, I think, when the pack comes in on Saturday. But Kansas, um, what happened at Kansas last week was part of what was a zany week in college basketball because 14 ranked teams lost at least one game last week. And so the top 25 is totally different than it was. Tennessee's number one now. Right. And probably will stay there one or two weeks and then somebody else moves in. Which, to what you said earlier, the craziness of college mm -hmm. basketball now. Uh, back on the practice field football-wise, getting ready for East Carolina in the Military Bowl on December 28th. Thanks for your support of NC State Athletics. I'm Tony Haynes. He's Jeff Grabley. 